Hi guys and welcome to The Career Show. I'm Saeed Mohammed, partner at Apply For You and I'm joined by... Ifan Hussain, the founder of Apply For You. So Apply For You, just to let you all know, is a job board. Um, it started off 10 years ago, uh, been running for uh, a decade now and we help people find jobs. Uh, individually, we've got 15 years uh, experience between, we have, yeah, uh, uh, between ourselves in recruitment as well. And we could tell you a story or two of <laughs> job seekers, of employers, you know, about the whole work, you know. I mean, Ifan, how did you end up in recruitment? Oh, it's a, it's a long story, but just to summarise, it's one of those things which uh, you kind of fall into. Yes. Um, we always have our aspirations and our dreams, becoming a pilot, mm. becoming a doctor, um, or if you're Asian, going into IT uh, <laughs> when I was growing up. Um, but it's amazing that you've got to make such a big decision about yep. your career at such a young age. Um, and that's a bit like what we're trying to help you with today is try to help the guys out there, the guys and the girls out there to make the right decisions um, or the be- a wiser decision That's earlier right. on in your career. And to be honest with you, the first step in choosing your career is knowing yourself. It and is, today, yeah. what we're going to be speaking about is knowing yourself. And uh, in each episode, we're going to be looking at different aspects of how you can find your perfect job. So when we talk about knowing yourself, I mean, that is such a broad term. Let's, let's break it down. Yeah, so I mean, look, it's really important that you don't look at uh, a degree or a mm. job and think, what am I going to do in my life? The f- best way to look at how you are going to choose a career is to know yourself first, know your best points, right? Yeah. Because when you know what you enjoy and what you're good at, then you can choose a career that has those things involved in the day-to-day. Absolutely. I mean, look, uh, to be honest with you, we we hear all the time about um, people saying, well, I want to do a degree in music because I enjoy music. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what are you going to do with that degree? Yeah, exactly. So if you're going to do it, if you you enjoy music Mm. and you're planning to become a musician, it's the perfect degree. But there's no point in you saying you enjoy music, but you don't want to then become a musician or you don't want to get involved yep. in producing music. Yep. Um, there's no point in studying it. So make a wise decision. Look at what career uh, you are. Or look at what you're good at and then choose a career that involves those aspects. I'm 100%. It's important to know that not only, is it, not only should you enjoy the mm-hmm. degree or the area of study, okay, or the path that you're taking, but also what is that path, where is that going to lead you, okay? Yep, exactly. um, and <clears throat> to be honest with you, you can choose whatever path you want, okay? That's down to you guys to decide. But how do you then portray your best points and actually focus on getting to the end result? For example, we, we spoke about getting a music degree. So you want to become a musician or a music director, fine, that is your end goal. So how do you start from here and end up as a music director, for example, you know? It's how do you discover yourself and Mm -hmm. how do you get your best points and qualities across to your potential Yeah, and I think that's what we're going to be going through over the next few episodes. I think the most important thing to first consider is Mm. that career path, choosing the right career path, right, Saeed? I remember when I was younger, um, I was looking at which career path should I go down, you know, and obviously the family... I think you need to tell them the story. Do I? Okay, fantastic. You have to hear the story. It's it's one of those things which, you know, when I was younger, I was thinking, uh, what career path do I do? Family's pushing IT or becoming a doctor. I didn't think I would ever become a doctor. (laughs) Um, So, you know, I watched this movie once. It had Harrison Ford in it. I can't remember what the name is, but um, I watched that movie and it was basically, uh, it was a physiotherapist that helped Harrison Ford get back on his feet um, the older generation out there probably <laughs> will be shouting the name out at the now? TV <laughs> yeah, I think I am. Um, and I remember watching that movie and then the next morning I was up and I was like that's it I'm going to become a physiotherapist yep. and you know when you're younger Saeed you have that knee reaction and you're like yes, that's it that's absolutely. my dream that's what I'm going to do bus that's it that's me sorted um, so I started to research it mm. study it I did two weeks work experience uh, or it was actually more than that but I did work experience in that field um, applied to a lot of universities Universities, I managed to get into the University of Manchester. Um, so my family threw uh, a party, you yeah. know, and they were like, uh, you know, my uncles were around, cousins, relatives. Yep. And I remember the scene. It was like, oh, mashallah, Beta, you're now going to become a physiotherapist. Come practice on me. <laughs> <laughs> and straight away, the next day I was put off and I was like, that's it. 
Mum, I'm going back into IT. I, I think if you ask our staff, <laughs> they're probably still thinking that we break their backs anyway, as it is, right, you know, with the workload. Really but, it, and sorry, go on, you were saying. Yeah, I mean, look, the reason why I brought that up or telling that story is because, you know, at that age, we really are, we're very, um, yep. you know, uh, something comes into our mind and that's it, we want to follow it. And we think that's the yep. perfect decision. And we all make that same mistake. So, you know, you guys and everyone watching probably has made those mistakes or will be making those mistakes. And the idea of you watching this program today is to try not to make those mistakes. Try to learn from, you know, the people around yeah. you, your elders uh, and other people, you know, from the stories that you hear um, and from the research that you do and from some of the tips we give you today, hopefully you will save yourself from making those uh, mistakes. Without a doubt, 100%. And to be honest with you, I mean, look, we both studied IT but we're now both working mm -hmm. in recruitment. Yep. Worlds away from IT. So even it if, really for example, is. you do decide to take a course or a career path, which is different to where you end up, do not lose hope, okay? Yep. Stay focused, be tenacious, mm -hmm. okay? And be resilient on all of these. So let me, let me, let me ask you a question, okay? We, we've understood, we've mm -hmm. briefly spoken about keeping, uh, having an eye on the tiger, keeping an eye on the yep. goal and working towards it, okay? But how do you actually get out your best points mm -hmm. how do you discover yourself and what mm -hmm. you should be doing well look the number one thing is you've got to stand out from the crowd okay. there's no point in everyone saying i'm a hard-working person because guess what 90 percent of people would say they're it's hard -working. a textbook answer people have heard it before it really is so you've got to understand what are your best points and when i say your best points what are your best unique selling points yep. so for example if i speak arabic hey do you speak arabic said mm, i can barely speak english <laughs> well that if I now apply for Arabic speaking roles and I enjoy speaking Arabic and something I'm interested in, guess what? I hope I'll get the job over yes, you, right? I absolutely. should. Yeah. And so that's what I mean. Think of your best unique selling points. We call them USP. You guys have probably all heard that before. Yeah. So think of your best unique selling points rather than not saying you don't mention the run of the mill, hardworking, ambitious, motivated. I'm not saying you don't mention mm. that, but always think of your most unique selling points first. Yeah. Um, and we're talking about choosing your career. So think of your best selling points and yep. utilize those best selling points. It might be that I'm a really salesy person. I'm really good with people. And think of what career paths are going to match that. Mm. So if I'm a good people's person and I'm good at mm. numbers um, and I'm good uh, at maths and putting things together and doing calculations. Yep. I sound like a banker, don't I? Yeah. Absolutely. Now I think, now that I think that, okay, well, actually, sounds like you a might banking even sound career. like my wife as well, though, but that's a different story <laughs> yeah, entirely. Okay. So, look, you, uh, just follow this, uh, follow this process with me. So, I work out my best points. Yep. I see which careers match those points. Yep. Then I think, is that a career that I would be happy to do? Yep. Right, and the way that you would do that is do your research. Mm. Do your research on the banking industry. Mm. Speak to maybe some fellow bankers. I'm sure everyone knows a banker or two. Try and get some experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. try to get some experience, some work experience, and see if that's something you're going to enjoy. And if it is, great, you found your career path. Brilliant. Sounds good. So, now that you found your career path, yep. okay, you uh, go out there, you try and get some experience, mm -hmm. you know, you work towards it. How do you present yourself then? You know, for example, um, we, we just spoke about giving um, your unique selling points, mm -hmm. your USPs, okay? Mm -hmm. One thing I definitely want to add to that is as well, Give examples, okay? And I think um, uh, the point they made was very, very salient. That everyone is a hard worker. <coughs> Give an example or a story of what makes you hard working. For example, okay, I'm a hard worker because when I was at university, I'd done my thesis, you know, and it got deleted, you know, I lost it a week before it was due, mm -hmm. which didn't happen to me, <laughs> you know, I learned the new phrase, but I worked hard for that week to get all the information back. Give some mm -hmm. sort of real life examples that actually give light to um, why you do hard work. So yep. it doesn't just sound like words, you know. How else can you stand up from the crowd? Well, it's really important. The way that you're going to stand up from the crowd is by really knowing yourself. Mm. You know, a lot of people go for interviews or go meet people and they're always worried about, oh, I can't do any interview practice with you, uh, Hussein, because I don't, haven't researched the company yet. And I, I'm straight away like, you're so wrong. Yes. The first thing that you've got to research is yourself. What are you going to talk totally. about? You're not going to go in there and talk about the company and say that I know you've got three offices. They know that. Exactly. They want to know about you. So you've got to know yourself first. And that's how you're going to stand out. Mm -hmm. By knowing yourself, what are you good at? What things match up to the role that you're interviewing for? 
and make sure you mention them. And I can tell you now that we have turned away loads of people mm -hmm. that have interviewed with us to work for us on these points as well because it shows mm -hmm. you know how deep you go and yourself as a person yeah no, just to just to add, sorry 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 um obviously we're talking about how you're going to best present yourself don't forget the basics yeah absolutely. dress sharp good smile good handshake uh well confidence groomed. well groomed yeah you gotta grow you know brush the beard trim the beard whatever you need to do and <laughs> but, i know this is this may be a bit of a humorous point but uh, i don't think we can undervalue how important it is to smell good. Yeah, um, nice. And I'm going to give you a bit of an example, okay? I, uh, two <laughs> years yourself? ago. No, no, not of myself. <laughs> but I think you may remember what happened with uh, this one particular client in oh, yes, Central okay. London I can, I can think of two few, years but... ago. Uh, we ha I had a client, that actually, a candidate that went to interview uh, with this company, a very good client of mine. And halfway through the interview, the managing director got out of the interview, out of the boardroom, and <laughs> yeah. gave me a call. Do you remember? <laughs> Saeed, we are going to have to get this chair fumigated. Well, <laughs> why is that, Mr. Client? Because the whole entire boardroom mm -hmm. smells. Yeah. Now, that wasn't down to the lack of preparation from this one particular candidate. It was just purely down to the fact that he was perspiring so much because he was getting nervous. Yeah, he's too nervous. And that had a particular scent to it. So do make sure that if you are suffering from high levels of per uh, mm -hmm. perspiration or anything like that, that you do smell nice because yeah. smell invokes a lot of different emotions. And don't forget, when you are sort of sitting in front of somebody, it is about them getting to like you yeah. and uh, see your body language and actually see what you're all about. Yeah, definitely. I mean, look, you can't forget the basics, you know, uh, mm. have a, dressing up well, looking sharp, being presentable, giving a good representation of yourself, yep. having a good, you know, a good handshake, smiling, uh, eye contact. Yes. Um, you know, you can't forget the basics, but then on top of that, it's also what you say. Um, and more important to what you say is how you say it. Is how you say it as well. So having confidence, having yeah. energy, having passion, having belief. These things are crucial. And I know that we're going to be talking about, you know, the actual interview mm -hmm. um, and how to really smash an interview uh, in one of the later programs. So let's let's say now, OK, for example, OK, uh, you've gone there for, for mm -hmm. an interview for the job that you want. All right. And you've given it 110 percent. The next day. You get a call from the company saying, sorry, Mr. Candidate, mm -hmm. but we're not going to offer you the job. Yeah, it happens. And you know what? We get so many people that straight away, they drop at that first hurdle. Yeah. The first bit of bad news, that's it. And you know, we've actually got a few people that we know very closely that yes. are a bit like that. Um, and you know what? It's wrong. Yes. There's no yes. two ways about it. How can you take the first rejection, the first punch, and that's it? You're out flat. Yep. Where's the Rocky? Where's the <laughs> Eye of the Tiger? Where's that person that says, you know what? It's not how hard I, it's not how hard I can get hit. It's how hard, sorry, it's not how hard I hit. It's how hard I, I can get, get hit, hit and still, but still get, get back up and run forward. I, was, you know? I think it was Muhammad Ali that said that, right? I think it was actually Rocky. Was it Rocky? Rocky Fair enough. They're both boxers, <laughs> but, right? It shows um, how much you know about no, movies. But it, it's really important. Don't drop at that first hurdle. Yes, definitely have backup plans and have, you know, if you're trying yep. to become a pilot or an astronaut, you know, think what is the, the next level you know if that doesn't work out what am I going to do I'm not saying only dream don't just be a dreamer definitely go for the ace of spades go for that perfect job that you want but also have a backup plan but do not give up on that first hurdle yeah absolutely you know? keep persevering that. keep going um and you know with a bit of luck with a bit of uh, effort you will hit it and I think it's important to mention at this point as well that in order to stay focused and have backup plans it's all down to the amount of research and preparation that you mm -hmm. do i.e. know yourself. If you know that you're good with people and you're also good with numbers, but you, the uh, people side of you is driving you <coughs> further, yep. then yes, you go into a, a field that will actually allow you to deal more with people. But mm -hmm. if that doesn't work out, you know that you're good with numbers. Therefore, you can utilize that and have that mm -hmm. as a uh, fallback or a backup plan as well, you know. Preparation. Prepare, uh, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Yep. Prepare to know yourself, prepare to know your company and everything about it as well. Okay, so we, we've spoken uh, about obviously how to uh, know yourself, how to uh, demonstrate mm -hmm. your best abilities, mm -hmm. get your points across, get by giving examples, so on and so forth, yeah. how you can uh, stay focused and backup plans. Um, and one thing that we would definitely advise you to do as well that is if you do want any further advice, then listen, just go onto our website, applyforyou.com. Uh, 
and simply give us a call or drop us an email. You know, yeah. we're here to help you. You know, Definitely. this is why we're we're here. You know, uh, imparting a little bit of our knowledge to give you some sort of guidance, uh, some sort of support uh, mm -hmm. throughout your job search. Itself. I just want to add, say that this first bit. I know that we are, uh, you know, maybe making a a, a mountain out of a molehill. Yeah. It may seem, but this first bit of understanding yourself and your best points. Yeah actually follows through each and every one of the other processes. It does, it from does. From your CV, from job searching and how to job yep. search, all the way through to the interview. These same things that we mentioned about your best mm. unique selling points will follow through. So make sure you take note of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Take note of them, write them down, because those same points are going to go on your CV and follow. Yeah. So don't take this as a mediocre point. Really think about what you're best at, what your best points are, and follow through with it. It's like building a house. When you the build a house, the exactly. first thing you build yeah. is a foundation. If your foundation is strong, your house is going to be yep. firm. It's going to stand for years to come, you know? Exactly. So definitely, definitely take time, you know? In fact, do you know what? When, when I was um, in this whole process myself mm -hmm. of uh, finding the right career, I, I went into IT, you know, the geekiest thing you could <laughs> ever get, you know? Yeah. But my mouth ended up being bigger than anything else, you know? Yeah, exactly. Therefore, hence, I'm in recruitment. But I do remember, I had no idea what I was doing. And I actually uh -huh. sat down with my dad, uh, who told me what he felt I would be good at. Because, but, oh, that's my a great dad. point. Yeah, yeah, really. But what really helped me was um, one of my dad's friends, you know. Uh -huh. He was in IT and he was a very practical, straightforward kind of guy. And I said to him, look, I'm thinking about doing this, I'm thinking about doing that. He told me, no. You go into uh, the engineering technical side, I'm telling you now, you're going to hate it. Yeah. And I was like, well, why? He goes... I'm telling you, look at you. Look I've seen you, you interact are. with people around yeah. you. I've seen, okay, how you, uh, you know, uh, meet people, how mm -hmm. you speak to them. Mm -hmm. You need to be in sales. And yeah. I swear to you, three years on, you know, after mm -hmm. getting into IT and everything, mm -hmm. I look back now and I think, ah, yeah. you were right. And it's true. And if you had, if you think about it, if you had thought of that earlier and you've taken yeah. that advice, then you may have studied a business degree. Yeah. Absolutely. Or a management degree or a leadership degree or something like that, which would have put you probably in a better stead where you are today, yeah, right? Definitely. Although, if you do make the mistake, and we both of us mm. have, don't give up. Still get that degree because you starting something and stopping mm. is a worse uh, it is. You know, experience, it looks worse on your CV, not completing something. Mm. Just completing a degree, regardless of if you go into that career path or not, mm. adds still a lot of value. Yeah, 100%. And I think it's you, uh, you touched on a very important point there. Growing up, all I ever heard was, you have to get a degree, you have mm -hmm. to get a degree. Well, yes, a degree is important, okay? It's mm -hmm. useful, okay, as a fallback plan for a number of things, but it's not the end-all and be-all, because ultimately, what does a degree show a potential employer it shows a potential employer that you have the ability to learn information retain that information uh -huh. um, give that information back in an understandable manner and in a timely manner uh -huh. and more importantly you can get things done yeah okay but you, you can, can show put your mind to something and complete it exactly but you can show you that same thing through different uh, methods for example apprenticeships yeah. now uh, for the last sort of few years we we've, we've been hiring how many apprentices loads right yeah. And um, I'm gonna, I think we're go we'll, we should give an example of one, you know, an apprentice started with us last year. Um, and he wouldn't say boo to a goose, you know. Yeah. You know what? Now, we can't get him to shut up. You know, he is absolutely mm -hmm. brilliant. And the way that he did it, okay, is that he was in a similar situation mm -hmm. that he didn't know what career path to do. So he mm -hmm. took on an apprenticeship uh, within recruitment. And by learning in a practical manner, by uh, implementing whatever he learned, he has now suddenly become one mm -hmm. of uh, one of our top billers. Yeah. At the age of 19, is he 19, 20? He's 19, I think he's turning 20. Turning 20, you know. So the point being, <clears throat> okay, that whatever you set your mind to, okay, if it doesn't work out, don't worry. There are always other alternatives mm -hmm. there, okay. And it took him, it actually took him, just talking about uh, mm. the same guy, it took him at least, I think it was four to five months before he actually started to get used to it and yeah. started to be good at it. Yeah. So perseverance, again, you know, you, you try something, you keep going, mm. and that's really part of getting to know yourself. Absolutely. Is that you work out your best points, and sometimes you don't even know, like you mentioned with your own story, you don't really know your own best points. So um, persevere, get to know your best points, and then use them moving forward. So... Sometimes, okay, we, uh, I know that uh, two weeks ago we had a scenario where uh, somebody had come to interview with us, right? And they changed the degree halfway through. Mm -hmm. 
how if you've changed your degree halfway through how would you be able to put that across in an interview or how would you be able to explain that the best way possible well again that's um do they complete the degree after half so no they started the degree okay um halfway through realized that you know what i'm not enjoying this at all yeah i went to do another degree yeah well i mean look straight away that's red flags it is straight away red flags and i'll be thinking this guy does not keep uh, does not see things through Probably out the door within 30 seconds. Boom, I'm gone. Because look, think about it. He's started two degrees, hasn't completed either or. He's still trying to find himself. He hasn't done step one. Absolutely. And full stop. So Absolutely. you've got to understand you're better off completing something that you've started. It shows you're a, you're a, uh, you know, a doer. Yep. And you get things done, which is really what a lot of companies like. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing as well, okay, is um, a lot of people, and I think maybe we might be jumping the gun here, but I think it's important to mention that when we are young, when we are still choosing mm -hmm. our careers, we have a lot of part-time jobs, you know? Yep. Please, guys, just as a side note, I know we're going to cover this more in the CV writing techniques, mm -hmm. but do not list all of them. Please, seriously, because <laughs> yeah. it looks confusing. You look like a job hopper, you know. So you've got to be um, certain with the jobs that you present, okay, and that exactly. you talk about as well, you know. And if you have, if you do find yourself in a situation where you're thinking, okay, I'm not enjoying this degree, well, try and look past it, okay. There's a reason that you started that degree or that course, okay, or whatever apprenticeship that you're on. So try and remember that feeling that you had. Why did you choose it? What were the reasons? And if you're halfway through, well, you've done most of the groundwork mm -hmm. anyway. Just see it through. You know, I guess we could say man up and get mm -hmm. it done, right? Yep. You know, uh, as see, harsh as that sounds, but that's, that is the case. It's true. A lot of people, for some reason or another, it might be even down to the cost. Yeah. Um, but they do two years, more than half, two years of the degree. And then the last year, they take a gap year and they never come back to it. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing wrong with gap year. Yeah. But if you're doing it, make sure you complete it. And I think that's probably um, completing that point. You know, without a doubt, it, without do a doubt, you know. So I hope that um, so far we've given you um, not an in-depth but a good insight mm -hmm. into step one. And the, look, there are four pr steps, okay, in getting the perfect job. Step one is knowing yourself. Step two is how to actually find a mm -hmm. job. The processes, the methods involved, because finding a job is a job in itself. The yeah. third thing, okay, is actually how to write a very good and effective and powerful CV. And the fourth step, the interview, okay? <laughs> so step one is definitely get to know yourself, take time, get to understand, speak to people around you, get your main uh, unique uh, selling points up, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, get some work experience if you have to, you yep. know? Just do whatever it well, takes, you, can, you yeah, know? Um, you can uh, definitely give us a call as well, like, uh, like we said earlier as well. Mm -hmm. We're here to help, you know? We will never ever say no, and we will do our level best to help you out. Um, and obviously, we, as we go through all of the episodes, we're going to look at each point uh, in more detail, mm -hmm. especially the, uh, the next three points coming up with the next episodes. So um, I think with, with that said, OK, take everything on board, you know, and take the first step seriously. All right. Mm -hmm. Persevere. Be tenacious. Do not give up. OK, that is the main point. Hopefully, we've uh, given you a slight insight into everything here, and we hope that this has helped help the guys. Uh, yeah, you know, just a bit of homework, if that's the right side. Oh, oh, <laughs> homework! I love homework. Go yeah, for it. Go just for it. Make sure by the next episode, you've at least written down your best points. A very good yeah? point. Your best points. What are your best unique selling points? So, if you yeah. speak German, German should be one of them. Yeah, if you're absolutely. native German, etc. So, um, just write down your best points. Well, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.